G'day everyone. Um, tonight I thought I'd do a video that's kind of more technically oriented. Um, I want to talk about the way Rolls-Royce used lead as part of their body assembly joining process. I was actually very surprised that when I looked on the internet there isn't an existing video um, about this subject. And even though a lot of experts in the Rolls-Royce field will know what I'm talking about, um, those new to the game probably won't. And uh, so I thought, what the heck, let's do a video so people can understand. So Rolls-Royce, when they would join and assemble their bodies, areas like this was a separate panel to this one and they would join, they were welded. And to finish them off, they didn't use Bondo, but they used lead, which was literally melted into the join of the sheet metal. Now, the problem with using lead, and if you think about it, it makes common sense. You're applying lead, then you've got steel, you've got aluminium, you've got the paint itself, all expanding and contracting at different rates. So what happens over time is you get stress fractures that occur. Now, they can be a combination of a couple of things. They can be physically expansion contraction, which the paint can't keep up with. And, or it can also be the process of the lead itself. If you get some air pockets when you are applying the lead, they will bubble through through time and cause cracking. Now, these cracks you see, I cannot impress enough will be present on almost every and any early Rolls-Royce. I'm talking Cloud, Shadow, Corniche. See here. All of these are what's known as lead wiping stress fractures. And they all occur at the major, at the main points where panels are joined. It is simply unavoidable. And to help kind of explain it better, I have over here a piece that I cut out and it is basically this part of the car. And you will see the stress fracture, just like you see the stress fractures here. Now, if I turn this panel over, you'll see where the two panels were joined. So that is a well joint going in just over here. What will surprise many is when I turn this over and show you just how much lead is actually in there. Sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed. There's no wonder that you get this cracking issue going on. I'll pick it up this way and you'll actually see that is about half an inch or very close to half an inch of lead at the joint. So, the, the, the idea of this video is it, it's a double-edged sword. If you get a totally original silver shadow or Corniche, Silver Cloud, let's pick some others here, they will, they will have this lead wiping issue. It's a double-edged sword in the sense if it's original, it will most definitely have these fractures. If the car's been repainted, you, in the early years of the paint, you won't see the fractures but rest assured, they will come back. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to go and scrape out half an inch of, uh, of uh, lead and replace it with half an inch of Bondo. So I hope this sort of helps a few people who've not been aware of this. Uh, lead wiping and the cracks that do occur are a normal, dare I say, 
result of the process. Is it a great thing? No, not necessarily, but it's what we live with when it comes to Rolls Royce. In later years, Rolls Royce changed a few things to minimize the amount of lead wiping, like for instance on the SZ, rather than join the body panel, they introduced a separate plenum chamber so that you physically didn't have a body join. They still had one here, but the size is smaller and so cracking was minimal. Okay, I hope you guys find this video interesting. If you uh, want more of these technical type of videos, just let me know. You can always find me at park-ward.com.